Well guys, this is uh, Two Passions Fishing here in Coldwater, Ohio. I'm going to have to walk it. I'm going to do some of this one-on-ones and just find uh, different corners to preach at. Uh, I can't use my sign today because 35-40 mile park gust wind. So I, I had the sign out here and it would just blow my sign everywhere ridiculous it is. So I had to put it away. And you only carry a sign that size. It's Hard to control, so I'm gonna go down. I, I'm, I'm gonna go back to downtown and and uh, see what we can do without the sign, but it should be be okay. So see you there. I'm gonna tuck you away here. Here in Coldwater, Ohio, I want to thank uh, Brad, my boss, who gave me the face guard. It definitely helps out a lot. It actually matches my summer, my spring summer street preaching outfit. My safety green. That's all I wear. So appreciate appreciate you giving that to me. Definitely a good day to work today. It's actually not too cold today. Hi, you guys. Yeah. God loves you guys. God loves you guys. Remember that. It's all about Jesus. Jesus is the reason for the season. I'd probably like to stop there and talk to them, but they're little kids. I'll have to be a little discerning with that. So I thought I'd be, I could say something walking by. Might get myself some trouble there in today's world. <laughs> some mothers might not appreciate that. Fathers. <coughs> yeah, when you're out here street preaching, it's, it's good to use a lot of discernment. I've learned a lot on the way and learned a lot from other street preachers doing the very thing I'm doing. This is not a, not a real big community. It's about 5,000, I think. It's a small little town. Small little town like Hicksville I grew up in. I wanna make sure my camera's on. Yeah, we're good. Somebody may think why well, I have a camera. A camera is actually a pretty good tool. But it's also good a security for me. If something happens, you know. Obviously, as far as I know, a camera camera can't lie. So, I mean, it's, if it's on camera, it's on camera. And. There's a few times I've preached in some big cities, uh, such as Fort Wayne, and, and uh, Battle Creek, Michigan, Cleveland, just different cities like that. That uh, you meet different kind. You meet some interesting people in these big cities. Let's just let's say that some interesting people. Not the not to put people down, but. A lot of these people that are in these bigger cities, you don't see a whole, you don't see it in mostly small, I call them small meat and tater town cities, but, but I, I probably, probably could be wrong. I'm sure, they're, I'm sure they're here, they're just not in the open like big cities are. They're more exposed, less, probably less than ashamed. That's a good walk down here. I was uptown with a sign, and like I said before, it was blowing everywhere. I could not control it. It's, I thought the being out uh, into the buildings, in the more in the town, would be less wind, but it was a lot of still a lot of wind. I'm glad the rain held up. I, I pretty much got pretty much everything on me against me today, but not stopping me to preach, but. It was rain on the way up here. I'm about an hour and 
20 minutes from home and rain all the way up here it definitely looks like it rain still the clouds are pretty pretty darkened and a lot overcast uh, today is a, just a nice nice quick warm shot a warm spell and it's supposed to drop like a rock tonight and it's supposed to get really cold so I thought spoil myself a little bit come out here and preach well it's a little warm because I hate the cold as uh, some of you know me I wear long johns and even through the summertime and two shirts in the summertime long sleeves all summer long no matter how warm it is but yeah We've got a gentleman coming up here approaching maybe I can no, he's gonna try he might try to cut me off yeah, he's gonna try to do that this is what they do right here he might not be doing it on purpose so you see some strange guy all lettered up they, sometimes they'll take shortcuts to avoid it No, he, he didn't do it on purpose. He lives over there. Yeah, the gospel of Jesus Christ needs to get out. It really gets me to, really gets me to, um, just uneasy and, I mean, it's my calling. Come out here, guys, just to preach. I mean, I'm not sure if God has attention. I mean, the, if you read the Bible, it almost seems like, almost seems like the Bible uh, declares everyone to go outside and preach, which that'd be awesome, that'd be great. But I'm not gonna be hard on people that don't. I wish they would, but I'm not gonna be hard on people that don't. It is a calling and I can't get away from it unless God takes it away from me, but I can't get away from it after what happened to me in 97. I'm gonna have to share that testimony on my YouTube channel sometime. I haven't done it yet. I want to do it, do it so I need to share it with you guys. Um, it's just a, a testimony how I came to God and God came to me and turned my life completely around. I mean, I was the lowest, the lowest of me. I mean, I wasn't on crack or anything like that, drugs and alcohol. Just, I was just inside myself and empty inside and just felt worthless and felt, what's the purpose of life? You know, I just, yeah, I got a job, got a family, a healthy family, make money, but it's got to be more than this. And it actually, it actually brought me into a depression and uh, really brought me into the dumps when you're in that place. And God brought me out, and I tell you, when he brought me out, wow, peace, joy. I mean, I wouldn't trade it for the world if the world was handed to me. I'm not talking about the world of the United States. I'm, I'm talking about the whole entire world. I wouldn't take it and trade the trade in for nothing. This is like a pretty good place to stand here, maybe. Traffic's trying to die out a little bit because it's uh, we're through the week. I don't know a whole lot about cold water. Michigan, or I should say Michigan is Ohio. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I get, I get them confused. Some of you guys are probably thinking, he's in cold water, Michigan. He's not Ohio. Yeah, there is a cold water, Ohio. So that's where I'm at. They can do some preaching right here. I don't want to end up distracting anybody and getting somebody in trouble. I'm gonna put my bag down because I brought my best coat out here. It's got a lot of lettering stuff on it, so I'm gonna put it down here. Ooh, I messed the camera up. Sorry about that, guys.
I'm on a voyage where I use my megaphone, my amplifier. This is a little different on sight. I feel almost naked. Without my sign. Now, the only thing in the winter time, being cold as it is, windows are up, so signs be great. I mean, there's times that people will put the windows down and uh, hear what you have to say. Very few people do. I mean, people, there's a lot of distractions in people's lives, you know. There's a lot of things going on in people's lives today. And 2020 has been a really, really big challenge for everybody. And uh, something uh, that many of us never experienced. You know, a lot of confusion, distractions, lack of discernment. And, you know, if it's about mask wearing and if it's about social distancing and we got all this stuff going on where people think of the government's taking control, government's taking over and all this crazy stuff in our world today in 2020. But I have to say my family and I, we've been really blessed in 2020. Um, it might be strange to some people when I say that, but I've been really, really blessed in 2020 because of some time off of work job that I have we work a lot of hours and a lot of days and it was pretty cool having weeks off even though we were essential we were essential so I work in a foundry so we make auto industry auto parts so we were uh, we're, we're essential but we still had time off when we were slow because when the customers were taken from the warehouse that slowed us down and that caused us to be have some time off for the week and got paid for it, which is awesome. You know, I really enjoy the time off. I had a lot of opportunities to preach and fish, which you guys know I do like a lot of fishing. My YouTube channel is Two Passions Fishing, so I, I have two passions, so I do a lot of fishing and a lot of preaching. So I'm fishing for fish and fishing for souls. And Jesus says, I'll make you fishers of men. So, pretty awesome. We got some traffic flow here. My jacket here has got a lot of lettering on it, so people would automatically know what kind of preacher I am. You know, obviously some type of gospel preacher of the Bible. And uh, yeah, I've been wanting to come here for, for a long time. Small, like I said, it's a small little town. You find um, some of these stoplights in a busy section in a small town is a perfect place. You pretty much just about get the whole town. If you're here um, long enough, you can about witness to the whole town just about. Especially if there's a McDonald's, or a Walmart, or a supermarket in a small town. It wouldn't be a Walmart here unless it was a, a suburban or a royal from a, like Cincinnati or something like that, a small town. But some big major city like that. But. Over there, you know, there's a supermarket, chief supermarket. You got a bunch of little uh, push-in stores there. McDonald's is a perfect place for, for street preaching for a small town. Everybody just about in this town, so. Hallelujah. Bible says today is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Yes, today is the day to get right with God. Not tomorrow. Not when you get your soul ducks in a row. Not when you get married and have children. Not when you get old and retire. Not when you accumulate money in the bank and you're comfortable. Not when you go through college. But you need to get right with God today. Why? You may have gas in your car and enough gas to get home and get where you need to go. And you have that little alarm system in your car when your gas gets low, that little, that little small tank that appears in your dash telling you you need, you need to fill up. But the thing is, your life doesn't have that notification. You don't know when your end will come. But Jesus, God in heaven does. For he has every hair on your head counted for. He knows everything about you inside out. 
everything inside out, your, your whole thought life, everything that you do, everything you have planned to do tomorrow. But God has a plan for you. You may plan for this holiday season and plan where you're going to go, plan what you're going to buy, plan who you're going to wrap presents for, all these different decisions that we make and plan what we do in our life. But God has a plan for you. And that only, not only a plan for you, but a command for you. Command, commanding you to repent lest you surely perish. Repent lest you surely perish. And He has a plan for your life when you do repent. He has a plan for your life when you repent of your sin and turn from your sin. For Jesus says, go and sin no more. A plan of salvation. A plan, a purpose for your life. See, many of us today are searching in this life, and God has it. Many of you today are recycling things in life, spiritual things in your life. Many people are searching things in life, relationships, comfort, forgiveness, trying to find peace for your souls. Try to find perfect love. And you know, many of us today, we can't say there's no such thing as perfect love on this earth. But God is perfect love. Everything that we search today in this life, God has for you. He has a plan for your life, a purpose for your life. The greatest gift ever God has given in this life is His Son, Jesus Christ. Yes, what a great gift of salvation. God has given us a gift of salvation in His Son, Jesus Christ. And it's not about Santa Claus. It's not about fairy tales. It's about the living God, the living God, who came on this earth and took breath as He was born from a Virgin Mary. Took breath and Holy Spirit filled God in the flesh, for His Word became flesh and it dwelt among us. For the Word was in the beginning. God came down to us to show us the way, to show us love, to show us hope, to give us purpose, to give us plan, a plans for our life. Turn to Jesus Christ today. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Bible says in Acts 4.12, nor is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given unto men by which you must be saved. Yeah, the doctors may say you're healthy, you may live up to see 70 or 80 years old. That's all the doctor can do and predict. He cannot, he cannot predict your death. No one can predict your death. Not the greatest science on this earth can tell you when you're going to die, but God can. Today could be your day to stand before a holy God. And it'll be a terrible thing for you to stand before a holy God in your sin. When God has made a way for you to repent of your sin and have forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Do not forfeit, forfeit that. Do not forfeit your souls for the world. Do not forfeit, forfeit your souls for money and pleasure. Come to know God today. Trust Jesus Christ today. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through Him. See, it's a relationship through Jesus Christ to know God. It's, it's a relationship through Jesus Christ to have purpose in life. It's only through Jesus Christ to know truth, for He is truth. For every man's a liar, Christ is truth. For God's Word is truth, and the truth will set you free. Whom the Son sets free shall be free indeed. Trust Jesus today. No one on this earth can take your sin. No priest can take your sin. But Jesus Christ can take your sin upon a cross, for He died for you upon a, on a cross to give you forgiveness, to give you hope. Turn in your sin to a living God, to Jesus Christ, and He'll return to you peace and joy, hope for your souls. A hope and a living hope for your souls. Trust Jesus today. Do not delay. Today could be your day. As I said before, today could be your day to stand before a holy God. 
We are in the times. We are in the last days. You know, these are the days of Noah. These are the last days. These are the, these are the days that the prophecies are being fulfilled. Yes. Jesus says, when all these prophecies are being fulfilled, the end will come. And we are in those times, uh, friends. We are in those times. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The way maker. Yes. The light in the darkness. Yes. The miracle worker. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. I don't know how anybody can hate on God's love. How can someone reject Jesus Christ who came to love, to care, to give you life? I mean, a wretched sinner like me. A wretched sinner like me came down from heaven to give us life and hope. To give us life and hope. To give us life and hope. Wow. What great love is that? That's awesome love. It's starting to rain on us now, guys. <laughs> I had a feeling that rain is going to come here soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I hope uh, those who are watching this video um, that you be blessed the holiday season. Um, this video will probably be posted probably after the holiday season, but I hope that uh, you're safe, hope you're healthy, and I pray for all my YouTube uh, subscribers, all my, all my subscribers, and uh, if you're a new viewer of, the, of this video or any, any of my videos, subscribe, share, and like. I really, really appreciate that, and, and I just, like I said, I use my YouTube, my Facebook, uh, Twitter, I mean everything, all my, uh, Instagram. I use all of it for ministering Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I try to be a witness in everything I do. Even my vehicle's a witness. It's got a bumper stickers on it, lettering on it, got some uh, scripture, writings all over it. So I wanna be a witness to everything I do. And uh, because this is a real thing, guys. It's a real thing, friends. This is no joke. This is no joke. No fake, no joke, no fantasy, no fairy tale. God is real. We can just look around us how real God is. I mean, you think about this earth being just floating in space and a lot of gravity. I mean, just, the, just the, um, the scientific fact of gravity keeping us on this earth. I mean, it wouldn't be for gravity. We'd be floating all over the place. But just think about how this earth and this, our system, solar system and sun and moon and planets, all that. I mean, that just, that just cannot come, around, come about. There's no way. I mean, I say that with passion. I mean, there's no way that I can just, just be, I mean, everything's in order. And you look at the sun, God, I mean, it sets up, it sets down, and, and the rain, it comes when it comes. I mean, the Bible says that God commands the clouds where to go. I mean, the rain comes and the seasons come. You have the fall, winter, spring, and summer, and, and it just it's amazing. You know, it's just, just amazing. I mean, you just you can't deny God. There's no way you can deny God. And just the complexity of human, the human uh, formity, you know, just how we are formed and created. I mean, it's just amazing. And there's no way we get around it. There is a God, a living God. And we need to understand it. Some people have asked me, says, how do you know that Bible's true? I said, the only way you're going to know the Bible's true if you read it. Just read it. And yeah, as you read it, as you study it, as you read it and as you study it, you'll know it's true. You'll, you'll, you'll get it. King James Version, you get the King James Version Bible. I, read, I study the New King James Version Bible, and I don't study any of the Bible pretty much any after that because there's a lot of Bibles out there, money-making Bibles, that men have taken and torn pretty much Scripture out of it. So just be careful what Bible you read. I mean, not, not every Bible is a good Bible. Just get, just get the, get, get the old-fashioned meat, solid Bible, the King James Version Bible. And the New King James Version Bible is a really good one. I studied it enough to know it. It's a good Bible to read. 
and it's closer to the scriptures, the Hebrew Greek scriptures. So just, just study the Bible and show yourself to, uh, that, hey, you know, this is really true. This is real, really going on in our life today. The Bible is predicting things and things that have already been predicted. It has already happened. And, and things, are, things are coming around and things are getting into order and, and things are being, uh, being, uh, being staged right now. I mean, it's on the stage. It's happening. So I wish and pray that uh, those who are viewing and those who are watching this video and any of my videos, but just be, just be encouraged. That there's a God that loves you. There's a God that cares for you. And uh, there's a God that wants to give you purpose in life. Don't let him go. You know, a lot of times people are waiting on God. You know, I'll wait, I'll wait on God to do something miraculous in my life. I'll wait till God do something, you know, um, maybe something horrible so I know maybe, hey, this is from God, you know. But God's a good God. Remember that. God is a good God. Yeah, we have a bunch of evil in the world and all the stuff that's happening in the world today. But a lot of the things that are happening in the world today, God has given man um, dominance. A lot of things that are happening in the world today because of man. A lot of things are happening in the world today because of man, woman, and, and, and children. We, we are the cause of it. I mean, what, what causes animals to go to and goes in stink? What causes, what causes rare, being animals going rare, being rare? Well, it's because of man. We overhunt things. We, we uh, pollute things. We kill things, you know? I mean, God's given us dominion over the earth, all the, in the air, and the plants, and in the, in the seas. A lot of the things that we are, uh, what we see today is not because of God. Yeah, God allows it to happen. I mean, a lot of things that we see today is because of man. The man's, uh, man's decisions. You know, you know, today we got abortion. You know, we have been abortion for years. Killing babies in a mother's womb. A man's decision. That wasn't God's decision. God respects all life. God respects all, all skin co color. I mean, there ain't no such thing as human race. There's only one race. It's a human race. God respects all of it. God created all of it. So just, just remember, you know, God loves you. God cares for you. And all this stuff that we happen, all the evils in our world today is because of man. Yeah, God, give us, God has given us free will. Really, God has given us free will to make decisions. Can we, uh, is there a possibility that we can actually have a country that's totally, I mean, no evil at all? Yes! Hallelujah! Sure can. But since Satan's in the world and since people love sin, it will be impossible because there's too many people of sin. But could it be possible if, if everybody got together and just had fear of God and just did, uh, did everything what God lo lo loves? And all, sure, crime, if we obeyed this Bible, God's commandments, and feared God, crime would drop like a rock, guys. I mean, the prison cells would be empty. There'd be nobody in prison, nobody in jail. There'd be no rehabs. <laughs> There'd be no rehabs. There'd be nobody on drugs, nobody on alcohol. Think about that. If you put your faith in God and trust, trust God's word, trust God's word, be, the jail cells be busted open. Nobody would be no inmates, no prisoners. Nobody would be addicted to drugs and alcohol, uh, suppressant drugs, uh, be no anxieties, be no fear. The only fear would be left to be God, and it'd be a good fear. That'd be awesome. But you know, the Bible does not predict something like that. Uh, you know, if, if that was actually true, the Bible would, would have predicted it, but it's not going to be predicted. The Bible predicts this way, and I'm going to paraphrase it somehow. The Bible predicts that we're all, there's going to be more people are going to go down in the, in the path of destruction. The Bible says, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Broad is the way. It's wide. Everybody's going down this path. Drunks, alcohol, fornicators, sex offenders, uh, pornographers, I mean, Liars, thieves, cheats, deceivers, uh, partiers, I mean, cussers, uh, God haters, all this, false religions, false prophets are all going to go down this broad way of destruction. That's what the Bible predicts. But then also, the Bible also predicts there's going to be a narrow way, a narrow gate that leads to life, and only a few find it. And there's going to be only a few of us going to find it, guys. There's only going to be a few of us going to heaven. The Bible predicts that. Why? Because there's going to be more people that love sin than God's righteousness, the righteousness of God. There's going to be more people that loves God, loves, there's going to be less people, there's going to be less people, I'm going to say it right, 
There's going to be more people. I got distracted by a guy back there. I'm sorry. I don't know if he's going to throw something out or what. He just started rolling his window down going by. I, I just have to be careful out here. I'm just being careful. Um, but yeah, there's going to be more and more people are going down this path of, of broader destruction. And they're going to be God haters. They have nothing to do with God's love. They're going to have nothing to do with it. There's going to be mockers down there. Remember that. There's going to be mockers down in the broad way of destruction. Mockers. If you mock the gospel, you're, you're one of those people walking down the broad destruction. If you're a liar, you're going to be one of those people down the broad way destruction. That broad way destruction is on the way to hell, guys. Friends, it's on the way to hell. I mean, there's no denying the truth of God. There's no way to, there's no way, to, uh, you can suppress it, you can ignore it, but, the, but the, God's creation, God's prophets, preachers, um, God's heavens declare the glory of God. God <laughs> it declares the glory of God. There's no way around it. I mean, you can be deaf, you're still going to hear it in your heart. God has, put, God has put the law in his heart, in your heart. God has put the law in your heart. You're gonna, it's going to be screaming inside your heart. So trust him today. And I love you. I love you, friends. Thank you for, for subscribing to my channel. And uh, remember, just, just seek God. If I was to seek the Lord, why may be found and call upon him while he's near. You know, for, and let the let the unrighteous man forsake his way, and let him come back to God, and God will give you peace and joy. He will give fulfillment in life. I mean, everything, every all these people are driving by. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to judge them whether they're all sinners and all God haters. Some of these are probably Christians going by, which that's awesome. But I'm just going to assume that most of these people are driving by here in this corner are not Christians. They're sinners, and. They're, they're, they're all searching for purpose in life. They're all searching for that relationship, that person they, they can marry and hope they'll bring happiness to them. But a rude awakening, it's not gonna be a, 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 greener, a grass greener on the other side. I mean, you're not gonna find a perfect relationship. You're gonna have troubles no matter where you go. If you have sin in your life and your relationship with someone else has sin in their life and they, they just sin every day and sin, 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 you're going to have a lot of trouble in that relationship. Why? Because of sin. Sin ought to be your enemy. Sin will drag you to the ground. Sin will never carry you. Sin will never carry you. Sin will never care for you. But sin will put you to death. He'll put you, sin will slowly put you to death. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Let me pray for all, all my viewers. Let me pray for you, uh, friends, that are viewing this video. And when I do pray, I, I take it seriously when I pray on my uh, videos because I'm hoping, I'm praying to God that this, this prayer will reach out to you and your heart. It will change your life and you'll be blessed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Father, for the viewers that are watching this video. And uh, we pray, Father, that you just touch them, bless them, and pray they would know the goodness of the Lord. The Bible says, taste the Lord and know he's good. I pray they would taste the goodness of you, Lord God, and the, and the life and the purpose that you have for them, God, as I pray. I pray you give them boldness. Give them courage to cry out to you. And, and uh, give them the courage and boldness to, to seek you, Lord God, as I pray. And Lord, and know that you'll never abandon them. You'll hear their cry. And you'll come down to the cry. As your Bible, as, as your word says, you'll come down to their cry. And you'll care for them. And you'll, you'll pick them up. And you'll give them what, what you desire to give every human being, every every skin colored person, whether red, white, black, yellow, red, yellow, white, black skin, you'll give everybody the, the life that you want to give everybody, Lord. That's in Jesus Christ. And I pray, Father, you touch him right now, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, praise you, bless your holy name. And John 3, 16 says, guys, friends, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord.